and on to problem 3. Problem 3 says the graph of the continuous function g, the derivative of the function of f, is shown above. The function g is piecewise linear for negative 5 less than or equal to x less than 3, and g of x equals 2 times the quantity x minus 4 squared for 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6. And part a says that if f of 1 is 3, then what's the value of f of negative 5? We know from the fundamental theorem of calculus that if I ever want to find f of b, then I can just find what f of a is and add to it the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. And that ends up being what I'm doing here. I know what f of 1 is, and I'm trying to find f of negative 5. And that means that I have to be doing the integral from a to b of my function, which in this case is g of x. But I see a couple of things that I'm going to have to watch out for. Number one, my limits seem to be in the wrong direction. So I could say that this is equal to f of 1 minus the integral from negative 5 to 1 of g of x dx. And two, because my function is piecewise linear on these intervals, it's going to be pretty easy for me to calculate this integral because it's just going to be equal to the area. So I've got this area from negative 5 to negative 2. That's a square with an area of 9, and it's below the x-axis, so it's negative. I've got this triangle with a base of 1 and a height of 3, so this is negative 1.5. From here to here, I'm constant 0. And then from here to here, this is going to be a triangle with a height of 1 and a, a height of 2 and a base of 1, so it's going to be an area of 1. So I'm going to have 3 minus this expression. It's going to be 1 minus 1.5 minus 9. Now, of course, I'm perfectly legit in leaving my answer this way. I could simplify this and just say that it's equal to 3 minus 1 plus 1.5 plus 9. It's 9 and 3 is 12. Take away 1 is 11. Take away 1 and a half, or add 1 and a half, and that's going to give me 12.5. Uh, but this is a perfectly fine answer because it's correct. And there's no reason to try and make that extra math happen if there's a chance you can get it wrong. All right, uh, part B, we want to evaluate the integral from 1 to 6 of g of x. Notice that from 1 to 3, we've got a linear function, and this is going to be a square. But for one, from 3 to 6, I've actually got this parabola, so we will have some math going on here. So I know that this is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of g of x dx, plus the integral from 3 to 6 of g of x dx. And this is going to be easy because this is just that square with the area of 4. Over here, I'm going to have the integral from 3 to 6 of 2 times uh, 2 times x minus 4 squared dx. So I'm going to have to integrate this using the power rule, using the chain rule, but u in this case, u substitution u is 1. So this is going to be 4 plus... This is going to be 2 times my expression cubed over 3, which I'm evaluating from x equals 3 to x equals 6. So it's going to be 4 plus this expression. I'm going to have 6 minus 4, which is 2 cubed times 2 over 3, minus, here I'm going to have 3 minus 4, which is negative 1 cubed times 2 over 3. And again, this is a perfectly acceptable answer. I could leave my answer in this form, and there's no reason for me to do any more math at this point. On part C, it says, for negative 5 less than x less than 6, on what open intervals, if any, is the graph of f both increasing and concave up? So keep in mind, if f is increasing, that means that I want f prime to be greater than 0. And if I'm concave up, then I want f double prime to be greater than 0. But this is a graph of g. So I want to know where is g greater than 0 and where is g prime greater than 0. So in other words, g has to be above the x-axis and increasing. Well, I know it's above the x-axis from 0 onwards, but it's only increasing from 0 to 1 and from 4 to 6. So f is both 
increasing and concave up when g is above the x-axis and increasing, which is at the interval 0, 1 and 4, 6. So that's part C. On part D, it says find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection in the graph of f. Keep in mind that a point of inflection is where concavity changes. So I want to know where f's concavity changes. That means I want to know where g changes direction, either from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. And I'm looking at this and I'm going from constant to increasing, so this is not going to be a point of inflection. Increasing to constant, so that's not going to be a point of inflection. Constant to increasing, no. Increasing to constant, no. Constant to decreasing, no. Decreasing to increasing, this is the only place where g actually changes direction. So I could say that x equals 4 is a point of inflection or is the x-coordinate of a point of inflection because it is the only position where g changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So the thing is I have to give the answer x equals 4 and I have to give my justification. I need to give a reason for my answer and I need to justify it in terms of what I see in the graph of g. So that's problem 3.